This is the Weaver's House, or Wafer's House, for those who speak Dutch. Um, it's fascinating. There are two separate families that live in here. In this, this building right here is a combined dwelling place for two separate families and a workshop that was producing sailcloth, which was Holland's number one export for a number of years in the 1700s. 1700s? Wasn't that right? That's what I remember. Yeah, okay. The first thing I always think whenever I'm in a place like this, a living history museum or uh, a recreation of an ancient living space, I think of three things. Where do you eat? Where do you sleep? Where do you go to the bathroom? So this is the sleeping closet. This is a, a uniquely Dutch thing where you sleep in a, a semi-sitting position. Um, for, for a time, it was considered extremely unhealthy to sleep lying down. It was associated with death. So you slept semi-reclined. Hence why it's so short. Yes. Okay. So you could fit two people in here. Yes. These are, these are sleeping closets. And this, and this looks people. like a privy. Uh, are you sure? No, no, uh, this thing right here. Oh. Ah, so we answered the second question, right? Uh, the third question, where do you and go? Evidently, this is where you That's eat. Where you eat. Yeah. And this is where you cook. So so just a second, I'm, we're, I'm wondering about something, which is we've got two sleeping closets, four people. Uh huh. Uh, but I believe he said that you would have eight people living in here, correct? Uh, yes. So. Is everybody else? Over? You could also Stairs put them out on the, on the ground. Um, this is a convertible space, maybe, and uh, I, we. What? It's an assumption to say that that would only be two people. It could also be four kids. Very fair. Here's a um, chafing dish. Chafing? Uh, I forget exactly how to pronounce it, but that's how it's always looked when I've tried to pronounce it. This is for coals here, and then this heats this dish here. Gotcha. So it's a secondary, uh, a secondary burner. It's like a yes. second burner on a stove. Yes. And then this hook, um, usually they're adjustable. Yeah. Up there we can see the, the holes. So that was designed to be adjustable for height. I'm going to say this is probably also the heat source for the house. Here's a double drive spinning wheel. Is that the whole living space is rotated around eating, sleeping, and going to the bathroom, and then some work. So that's kind of interesting. I also find the sleeping closets really interesting, right? Like, to us it probably seems very quaint, but I think... I swear I've seen these things in some like home mag home uh, architecture and design magazines, right? That you'll uh, have sleeping spaces that are sort of, um, you know, closed off and it's just a sleeping space. Right now we use our bedrooms for lots of things. We use them for work, for watching TV. And, you know, it's kind of a large area, whereas these closets are, you know, single function, right? You sleep and then you get up and you close the doors, you're done, right? And then, yeah. and then every, all your other living is done out here. Although they could also be used as storage spaces during the day, so long as it's easy stuff to move. Yeah. We talked about eating and sleeping, and we're assuming that this is where you go to the bathroom. And probably the less said about that, the better. Although, if it is that, then there's probably a, a changeable pot that would go here originally. Mm -hmm. And then you'd clear that out in the day. Uh, One interesting thing about this living space is that this house is actually a two-family home, both of which work in the workshop that's attached to the same building. So this room contains a family of six. There's another room just through that door which also contains a family of six. And then they together work in the workshop, which we're going to go look at next. This loom has two heddles, two sets of heddles here. What is They're that string heddles. These are the, the parts that are going to move up and down to create different patterns of shed here. This is where you've rolled on the warp, and over there there will be a beam to roll on the finished cloth. And then this bit right here is called the reed. This smashes up against the fibers, the, the, the string that you just passed through to put it, seat it in place. So these are in theory, hemp fibers, yes. which we're using to make sails. I think you can see some of the sail cloth. Yes, and so here's the bench where you sit, and then there's two pedals, like an organ, that are moving these patterns of uh, warp threads up and down to create a pattern. Uh, they lift every other thread up and then every other thread down. So you can just pass it straight through and through and through. Putting all of this together? It appears to be. Um, this is a reed. This is an original one, and it actually appears to be made of reed. Um, modern ones are made out of little metal slats, but these ones appear to be a whole bunch of reeds. That must have been all set together and then glued together. In, in some sort of pitch or something like that. The, this is brilliant. It, it's quite stiff. Um, I'm not sure exactly what kind of reed we're using, but it's not like the leaves on cat show. This is... A bit stronger. Here we have the hemp sticks. Um, the fiber again has been prepared here. 
Yeah, that's pretty familiar. That's prepared partially here and partially through what's called flax break, which they don't show here. And then that eventually results in this. Uh, funny thing, uh, the word cannabis um, is where we get the word canvas. Canvas is originally a cannabis-derived cloth. And as a reminder, all these are made out of hemp. Which is hemp stalks related to the cannabis plant, canvas, which comes from the word cannabis. So the, the gentleman out there who runs this museum mentioned that the people who lived here made sails for ships. And something that I think is really interesting is that of course you would use the sailcloth also to for the sails on the windmills, right? Yes. And so all of a sudden what you're seeing there there's a metaphor here that the well the windmills hold their ships, right? They're just in place. And rather than the sails propelling the ship forward, the sails move while the ship, the windmill, stays in place, right? So you have the same sort of mechanism, wind blowing on sailcloth, uh, producing a very different result. Do you get what I'm saying there? Yeah. It seems really, like, interesting and weird that in, you use the same power, but instead of driving it somewhere, instead of the sails the, are removed. I wonder if the terminology is the same. Like, uh, I, I think they talk about, like, reefing the sails, and, and I, 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 I think they do. I think yeah. they talk, use a lot of the same terminology. That's cool. So, so that also means that if you're if you are a windmill operator, you're also a sailor. 